Hi guys, I'm Andrew Bolt, and welcome back to Xander Productions Q&A video number three. And what a coincidence, that since there's only three questions that have been asked from three people. I'd like to personally thank you three for wanting to ask these questions. I'm sure a good number of other people probably wanted to ask questions, or really just don't care. But with that said done, let's answer some questions. Julian Quigley asks, I want to introduce some of my friends to Linkara. What are some good introductory episodes? Uh, that would depend. Are your friends fans of Marvel, DC, Pokemon, Doctor Who, Star Trek, Mr. T? In the end, it's on your friend's perspective. Personally, the ones I like are the ones where he fights against Mechacar, so Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number one, and Power Rangers Zeo number one. That's, that, that, that's actually kind of clever. Or's review on uh, Green Lantern's Blackest Night. That's a pretty good one to go for. The Adventures of Jello Man and Wobbly. Godzilla, Kingdom of Monsters. Starscream number one. Rumor reviews the Thing from Another World comic, the comic book adaptation of it. Or the episode that got me into a top of fourth wall, the review where he reviews Pokemon, The Electric Tales of Pikachu number one. This was the comic that I loved reading before watching his show. And because of that episode, I got hooked because of his storyline. If your friends are not going to get interested in the review, they might as well get interested in his storyline. So, go with what you've got. Now, these aren't the ones that you should go by. These are just ones that I think that you probably should give it a try for. So, there's that. Death Animated 995 asks, Where did you come up with the idea to do Xander Adventures? A top the fourth wall and a copyright strike. I'm sure a good few of you probably don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, let me first start with the Atop the Fourth Wall thing. When I watched Atop the Fourth Wall, I got inspired to want to do my own review show with a storyline, which apparently I was not the only one doing at the time. But along my way of doing that, the kind of review show that I wanted to do at the time was reviewing the Super Sentai series and comparing them to the Power Rangers series and seeing the best of both worlds of what we got and what we didn't get and just that kind of parallel in ways. And then I got my first YouTube copyright strike. And this was before Where's the Fair Use, so I wish that bandwagon came sooner. But actually I'm a little more grateful that it did. Because I didn't want my fans to be uh, left hanging, I decided to just, well, focus on my storyline. And then from there it just became a two season thing of me just having fun, uh, dressing up as different characters, showing off my special effects. So basically, I'm a top fourth wall if I was more focused on storyline than I am on comic book reviews or reviews in general. Miguel Mercado asks, What was your inspiration for every character, even the villains? Oh boy, strap yourselves in people, this is gonna be a long one. I'm going to split it in two categories, my main characters and my villain characters. So let's talk about the main characters first. Commander Ninja was inspired by a joke. In my Who's On First tribute to Abbott Costello, um, there's this part of the scene where like uh, I have these two characters get like a bunch of weapons ready to kill each other, and then this guy, and then this 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 uh, camouflage wearing guy with sunglasses shows up and has a dual disc, saying that if you don't go back to the skit, you're gonna have to play a children's card game. <laughs> I thought uh, I, I had a, I have no idea what mindset I I just wanted to change some I just wanted to put something different in the skit. But somehow I thought, you know, I kind of like this uh, character for like for future videos or something like that. What I could do with it. He was going to be a uh, Nerf gun reviewer that he was going to just uh, show off the Nerf gun of the day. So just another person online who reviews Nerf guns for a living. So I figured I'd use this character for uh, storyline purposes. Like uh, this would be the guy that would be my extra muscle to help protect me or fight with me to fight against some sort of monster or whatnot. His look, um, I just had clothing, uh, camouflage around and, and a pair of sunglasses. I thought, okay, I'm going to make a character out of this. Total mask and just put sunglasses on, which he just didn't look like a ninja. Thank God I rectified that in Season 2. Uh, for inspiration for the commander's voice, if you ever saw the movie uh, Monsters vs. Aliens, there's a character named General Monger who has this uh, military Santa kind of voice, a high command kind of thing. I don't know what he's uh, accent accenting or anything like that. But that's where the voice of Commander Ninja came from. Whenever he says something is classified, it's not because it, he's just a... Uh, the inspiration was not because of, uh, like, uh, military use. Actually, what I had in mind of that was a character from uh, the anime, the melancholy of Harui Suzumiya character, uh, Mikuru, who is a time traveler from the future, and she can't say anything from the future because she doesn't want uh, time paralyzes or something like that. And she states that it's classified. 
Yeah, that's where I got that from. Uh, now let's talk about the Robot Daughter. What inspired me to make this Robot Daughter was that, of course, the top of the fourth wall and Mystery Science Theater 3000, I want a robot sidekick. But I didn't just want a robot sidekick, and I was at the time still trying to think about, well, how can this robot sidekick be any different than anybody else? When I was showing uh, this uh, robot project to my dad, helping me like uh, drill a hole at the top of the soda bottle because it's really hard to like cut open that, my dad just looked at this like, oh my gosh, that's Andrew, that's adorable. And there you have it. That's pretty much how she got her name and how she, uh, Funny enough, as soon as I heard that, uh, I just thought about like the, the like a little sentence in my head, and I just thought about Andrew's daughter of robotic awesomeness, B U L L, adorable. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's brilliant. Only instead of adorable B U L L, it's B U L, because I figured that that would make sense in a, in my own little strange mind. So yeah, she became my robot. Uh, so she became my robot daughter because of a uh, choice of naming. Who'd have thunk it? But. I've never thought of it. I don't think I've ever thought of that before. Just uh, just having a robot companion be my daughter instead of having being a daughter kind of a uh, reciprocate in a way. I just thought that's kind of cool. Her design is uh, and it really helps that her design is based off uh, Eve uh, from uh, from the movie Wally, and that that just doubled uh, that just doubled my help on uh, trying to make a um, girl like a persona kind of thing for this character. Okay, so I've got my ninja and I've got my robot. What else do I need? How about a scientist? For those who don't know, this uh, list of characterizations and whatnot are inspired from my favorite YouTube show, Top of the Fourth Wall, and bits and pieces of other social media. So, for Professor Y, uh, this is obviously the Dr. Insano of the group, or in this case, the Dr. Linksano of the group. Instead of just being a straight up doctor, I decided to just make him a professor. And because I'm a Doctor Who fan, I figure I'd probably give him some sort of a questionary name. And I thought to myself, what's the best parallel to a Doctor Who? How about a Professor Y? I thought for a cool idea for a character connection, he was friends with Commander Don Ninja, that they know each other from the past. That they're best that like they're best friends from like a, a long time ago, and they haven't seen each other in a long time. I thought that'd be a pretty cool um, connection to bring this character in. Now, there are a lot of inspirations for this character. The choice of his voice was actually inspired by a Mystery Science Theater uh, riffing of the movie of uh, This Island Earth, where there's a professor kind of character, and he kind of has this kind of voice. Well, not this particular voice, but I've never known a scientist that sounded like, um, that didn't sound like uh, some sort of a mad scientist or German. I don't get why German. But I figured that if, uh, if there was going to be a scientist with a fairly uh, weird voice, why not a voice of Douglas you're right. So, basically, I just threw that in there because, figure, if a scientist needed a weird, uh, if this guy needed a weird voice, that'd be the uh, voice I would throw in there for him. <laughs> There's obviously a good few uh, nods to uh, some um, to Doctor Who. Uh, the fact that he's wearing a bow tie for the uh, homage to the uh, 11th Doctor. And now it's time to talk about the villains. First up on the list are the Shadows. Now, obviously, the Shadows are the minions of my main bad guy of the series, Van. I'll get to him for a little bit. Now, here's the funny thing. The Shadows were not originally my idea to uh, have as a minion kind of character. I wasn't actually trying to do that. I was actually trying to do a... Uh, remember, I was trying to do the uh, Super Sentai series review kind of thing, and I was hoping to bring in, like, some kind of a costume monster of the day and fight them off in a way. But I didn't have the money at the time, even though ironically I, I had a job, I had a job at that time, but the, I didn't have like a credit card kind of thing to purchase stuff online at the time, but now here we are. The shadows are obviously just, uh, just, well, silver mask, black costume, there's my minion of the day. There's, the, there's my monster to fight of the day. They're basically the foot soldiers of the, um, of my main bad guy, and I am going to broaden their, uh, scope of, um, of their purpose and being and whatnot. Now, for Vane, this one is going to be hard to talk about because I don't want to spoil anything because I still want to reveal, uh, I still like what the shadows, I want to bro brighten the scope. And I just, um, I just don't want to reveal that much other than that this guy is a very vain guy. But my inspiration for Vane, once again, at top of the fourth wall, because if you have no other inspiration, try somebody else's ideas. So basically, he's kind of a... I can't say he's a Lord Vice-based kind of character, 
because for this villain, I want I just want to again don't want to spoil anything, and I just want to show you guys what I want to do with this villain character for the future. Captain Don. The funny thing about Captain Don is this guy was just a character I built because I just had some costumes lying around from Halloweens from before. Uh, like a mafia costume and a uh, pirate costume. I thought, hey, those be great uh, things to combine together to make a character. I even had to do like some studying like on, on like certain uh, slangs of both pirates and um, gangsters or mafia gangsters. I need to go back and study up on it. If I'm ever going to bring this character back for Season 3. Or later seasons, I don't know. As soon as I made this character, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I, I need to keep this character. This seems like a very interesting villain character to keep around. So hopefully, Shay, you'll be able to see more of Captain Don on the Mafia Pirate, Shay. Ha! Hey, ha, 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 ha. That's pretty much uh, how Captain Don was born. Pretty much as a joke. But a joke I'm hoping that'll uh, that'll work. Well, that's it for this Q&A. Thank you, uh, Julian, Death Animated 995 and Miguel for asking me these questions. And, um, for anybody who's uh, watching this video right now, do you think you got all the answers you wanted? Do you think that there's uh, probably more that I could have done? Well, uh, make some comments below uh, for this video, or there's there's my discussion page. I also have my Facebook, my Twitter, uh, my DeviantArt, and um, my blog. If Those are my sources of... Um, info that you can go for, or my Google+. And if you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video, and just, uh, there's really nothing else I can say. With that all set down, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this Q&A. May God bless, and um, have a good day.